Hi, this is Cindy, and I'm going to talk about some of the three-dimensional components that you'll need to know how to use in order to create custom families. Um, so I'm going to, under Families, I'm going to say New, and I'm going to select a generic family because we are just going through the motions of um, how these different uh, components work. And so I'm just going to select Generic Model, and I'm going to say Open. Um, so across the top here, you'll see some terms that are familiar to you a little bit if you've used AutoCAD 3D and some that aren't. Um, and so we're going to use some of those to be able to create some different forms. Whenever you approach being able to create a custom family, whether that's a chair or a piece of cabinetry, um, you really just need to break it down into these different components and which one of them you're going to be able to use or different forms. So we're going to start with the easiest one which is extrusion. And so I'm just going to select extrusion. You'll notice on each of these as you hover over them it does give you an example of what that it looks like, how it works, um, but as you can see here you can see the extrusion there. So with an extrusion you can create something as simple as a rectangle, um, but you can also create more complicated forms than that. Um, as you can see here, it has an extrusion start and end. So let's say, you know, I was creating a countertop sitting on a set of cabinets. I could start that at 34 and a half inches and I could end it at 36 inches. Um, in Revit, uh, feet is always the default. And so whenever you're entering any of these dimensions, um, you have to put in inches. If you're working with custom families, sometimes it's easier to be able to just put that in in inches. Um, I know that I certainly work with it that way. And you can change this under Manage and then Project Units. And under Length here, you can select, instead of feet and fractional inches, you can um, select fractional inches instead and say OK. And now inches will be the default, so you, I could just type in 34 and a half and 36 rather than having to um, also include my inch mark. Um, so after I'm done creating my shape and I've decided where it's going to start and end, um, I just need to hit my green check here. Anytime, you know, just like when you're in the Revit project, when you're in the middle of doing something, you're going to have this green um, bar that indicates you're in the middle of doing something. If you try to do something else, it's often grayed out. Um, and that's why, because you're still in the middle of doing something else. So I just need to go ahead and hit check. And now when I look at that in 3D, and I'm going to do that by clicking on my little default 3D here, I can see that I have um, my panel that I drew there. I'm just going to go back and look at that um, from the bottom. And like, let's say... Um, you know, I have something else that's underneath it. Again, my extrusion, I can create any shape I want. So I could create, you know, something just completely crazy here. Whatever shape that was, and it's going to extrude that shape um, straight up. So this time, let's say I start at zero and I end at 34 and a half, and I go ahead and hit my check mark. When I look at that in 3D, you can see that now I've applied a base um, to my piece there. So that's extrusion. I can also look at um, a model from the front or back or left or right, any of these elevations that are over here, and I can create extrusions going that direction as well. So I can look at this from the front, and I can um, select extrusion, create some kind of shape, Let's say it's this circle, and I can hit check and when I look at that in 3D now I have this circle going this direction so any one of these flat directions that you want to be able to look at your project from and you can create an extrusion and you can create a start and an end to your extrusion okay so let's look at the next one that we have here um, the next one is a blend and again um, when I hover over my blend back on home, you can see that it brings two solid shapes together. Um, it does this with straight lines. Um, it doesn't, you know, apply a curve like if you were doing a loft in AutoCAD. Um, it does this pretty much straight line. Um, so if I were to select my blend here, and the most typical example I usually use is like a tapered leg um, on, a, on a chair. So um, if I 
make the base of my leg here um, and then I select edit top and I'm going to draw the top of my leg here like let's say this was a, a le you know pretty sturdy leg on a, a sofa or something like that I'm gonna have my start which is my first end which is zero that means where I've started and my second end is where we're going to end um, in this case I'm gonna change that to eight inches and I'm going to hit check and when I look at that in 3D you can see there that it's blended those two forms together and at an angle there where I had placed it okay so the next one here is a revolve and if you're going to create anything that is round in shape you know so you're creating a lamp you're creating a column you're creating you know anything that's round you want to do that using a revolve a sphere so anything that's round you want to use a revolve so if I select my revolve and I want to create something that looks like um, the tulip table for example I'm going to create half of what that shape looks like create a curve here okay so you can see that that's kind of half of what that shape looks like the next step is to select an access line in this case I want it to just go around the middle there so my access line I'm going to start and stop that right on the center of my object and then I'm going to hit check and you can see that that goes um, follows it all the way around now on a revolve I don't have to go um, all the way around I can you know tell it that I just want to go 90 degrees or 180 degrees so I don't necessarily have to go all the way around in a circle like I'm showing there okay so the next form that we have here is a sweep now anytime that you create a sweep you want to use a profile um, you can draw one on the fly while you're creating the sweep but it is often difficult to control where that profile is what direction it's going so it's often better to just create a new profile and you need to do that by going new family and you're going to select profile and you'll notice that there's other profiles here that are more specific um, you know mullion rail um, and these are going to be reveal these are going to be specific to things that are in the project Re uh, mullions of course apply to windows railing rail used for railings um, and these profiles are specifically used for things that are in the project so I'm going to select profile and open and here I'm able to create whatever shape I would like to sweep um, along a path and I'm just to keep it simple um, I'm just going to select a circle so I'm going to draw my circle here and um, I'm going to save it I always have a separate file for profiles and I'm going to load that into my project so then I'm able to select sweep and the first thing you're going to do is sketch a path or pick a path um, if I had a three-dimensional object and I wanted my circle to follow it let's say for example the top of this square I could say pick a path but then I'd want to be in 3d um, or I can sketch a path and I, that means I can just draw um, a shape that I would like it to follow so if I have this as my path and I select OK and then the second thing I'm going to select is my profile and that's what I loaded in here was my circle I then like to look at it in 3D and make sure, oh yeah, that looks like my circle is centered on my line. That's what I want. Sometimes if I had, you know, a shape that had some directionality to it, left, right, um, when I select it, I'm able to flip it. I'm able to move it in either the X or the Y direction or change its angle. And so that allows me to make some modifications to how that profile is being applied. And I can just go ahead and hit check. And you can see that that shape will then follow my path. Okay. back on home um, so then the third thing we have here is a swept blend and when you hover on this again you can see that here we're going from one shape to the other and we're getting it to follow a path so how what I had said before about this about the um, blended shape 
where it's just going to be square in nature. If you want it to follow a curve, you need to use a swept blend. Okay. So in this case, I'm going to select swept blend. And first I'm going to sketch my path. And again, I'm just going to keep this simple. I'm just going to select a curve here. And I'm going to hit check. Um, and then for profile one, I'm going to select profile one and I'm going to select that seven inch circle um, that I had created. And you'll notice that the seven inch circle placed itself on the first dot on it, it says it there on profile one. And that has to do with how I drew um, my path. So starting from here and going to there. And then I'm going to do profile two. I'm going to select profile two. Now, I don't have another profile loaded, however, so I'm going to say edit profile. And it's going to ask me, like, how do you want to look at this? Because you can't look at it from the top and still make a, make this that you want to make. So I'm going to say um, that I'm going to look at it in 3D. Okay. So you can see my form over here. And I'm just going to, again, keeping it simple, I'm just going to draw a square. Okay. So I have a circle and a square. And I'm going to go ahead and hit check. So now I have two forms and a path, and I'm going to go ahead and hit check again. And you can see where it has formed from that circle to the square, it has blended those two shapes together. Um, again, using this on, on arms that taper from a flat surface to a round surface, on legs that taper in a curve, um, anything that you want to have follow a path as well as um, be able to um, create a form. So then in addition to all of these solid forms, you're able to create void forms of the same types. Um, and so these are created exactly the same, except that then you're able to um, do, you're able to cut one thing out of another. So if I go back to my reference plane, and let's say, for example, I need a hole in the middle of this, I can select void extrusion, and I'm going to create one here. I'm just going to give it a height of four feet if it lets me type here. Okay, so you can see there where it's cut a hole out of my item, and if I look at it in 3D, you can see that there. I can also select that, make it taller so that it cuts all the way through, and now I've got a hole in my object. Now you can take any object and make it into a void. So I could select um, this sweep that I have here. And if instead of it being solid, as you can see over here on the left, it says that it's solid. I could change that into a void instead. Um, so if I had accidentally made it a solid form and what I meant to do was cut, um, I could do that at this point. So hopefully you know how to make all of these different forms um, as these are integral to be able to make any kind of custom family. Thanks.